This person wants to be the new team t-shirt cannon guy. Well, fire up that t-shirt cannon because we got merch, baby. The merch is now live. It's going to be the first link in the description. Go ahead, check it out. If you decide to get something, let me know. There's a couple different designs right now. There's still stuff to come. I'll update you guys as the merch continues to grow. You can get a phone case. You can get a hoodie. You can get a t-shirt. You can get like a laptop cover. You can literally get whatever you want. If you decide to get something, let me know on Twitter or in the comments. And if you do get it, take a picture of yourself with said item, whatever it is, if you decide to get a coffee mug or whatever, take a picture of it, send it to me, and I'll feature you in a Stags episode, the picture with whatever item you decide to get. If you do decide to get something, I appreciate you. High five. Thank you for supporting the series. That's awesome. Let's get into the video. Merch is live. Link in the description. You love to see it. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to your Saskatchewan Stags. We are just about to head into the year six NHL entry draft, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. The first three years we were bad. Well, year three actually we weren't that bad. We just had a terrible month of March. Now year four we ended up making the postseason. Year five we ended up getting bounced in the conference final. Actually back to back years. Year four and year five. And both of those times were bounced by the eventual Stanley Cup champion. Last year with Calgary and this year with the Vancouver Canucks. So almost 60 wins in back to back years and we can't quite get over the hump, so something's got to change. So going into this draft, I have a few things I'd like to do, uh, but just going back to the merch thing here, I just want to say thank you to everyone who is so positive about me putting extra ads on the videos. Now, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stick to what's been working for the past seven years, so I really do appreciate it, but I'm going to stick with uh, stick with my guns here. If you want to support the series at all, go ahead, cop a t-shirt or something, and maybe I'll feature you in a video. But uh, I just want to say thanks for for all the positive comments. You guys are just a bunch of nice quality people. Virtual handshakes and high fives to everyone in the comments. Uh, but in this video, we have a couple comments to go over. Now the first one comes from Jack. He says, hey X-Tech, you should trade Braden Shen at the draft. Oh my God, you mean the Stanley Cup champion, Braden Shen? All right, let's see what his reason is. The reason I say that is because you're gonna have Cole Perfetti ready to be the second line and you wouldn't want to stunt his growth. You are the best NHL YouTuber in the world. Damn, that is some high praise. Thank you, my friend but I appreciate you Jack um, now I've I agree with you I don't want to do it because I really 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 like Braden Shen and I want him to be a piece of this team headed into our Stanley Cup run because it is gonna happen we are gonna win a Stanley Cup I know we're going to but just to get the trade juices flowing I'm gonna go ahead and throw Braden Shen on there now I'm not gonna say I'm gonna trade him but I would like to get some trade juices flowing out there maybe some something comes our way where, where we really can't say no to it. Now I've put Mahalik and I've also put Dougie Hamilton, who is a very popular player in the comments for us to go ahead and put on the trade block. And I completely understand why I'm not saying he's the issue why we didn't, you know, get past the conference finals, but I mean, all things considered, he's been really steady. I mean, constant 50 point years since coming onto our team. Is he overpaid? Yeah, a little bit. Maybe if we didn't have to pay guys like a good Gucci and Profetti coming up. Maybe I would be more keen to keeping a guy like Dougie Hamilton, but since we got to pay some people, every single penny counts. So unfortunately, I think we're going to have to say goodbye to Dougie Hamilton. Now, I'm hoping that uh, Mr. Hayden Fleury is available in free agency because that seemed to be something in the comments you guys wanted me to go after. He's 85 overall out of Carolina. So we get rid of a Carolina defenseman in Dougie Hamilton and we get another one back with Hayden Fleury, but he's He's a Saskatchewan boy. He's going to make a couple million dollars less. And again, all the money counts. Now, I've went ahead and I put Mahalik here, not because I want to trade him, but kind of because I want to get those trade juices flowing. And he has a ton of trade value. So I'm sure there's going to be some interest in Mr. Mahalik. Now, Zach says I should go after someone like Boris Yakupov, all in caps. Now, I'm not going to go after Yakupov, even though that would be awesome. He's making 12 million bucks. That would kind of be counterintuitive to what I want to do. So I'm going to say no to Boris Yakupov, but yes to trading Dougie Hamilton. Now, just so everyone is on the same page, Fizz and I, we want to get you up to speed. He says, I don't know if you know this, but Valerie freaking Chubby Chubisov is a Saskatchewan stag. Honestly, 
that is one of the greatest comments I've ever received in all of my years of all in all of my years of comments and YouTubes and franchise modes. That's the one. So in the first round, we have pick number 30. I'm not going to move up because I don't feel the need to. Again, if something comes our way, it might not be bad. I mean, maybe we can move up into the top 15, but really all our positions are set. Obviously, it wouldn't hurt to get another stud player, but we know Pittsburgh is going to get that franchise guy. They have the first overall pick for the third time. Sorry, the fourth time. Is that right? They had Lemieux, Crosby, um, Mark andre Fleury, and I guess now Ron Tierney. So they've had four first-round picks since 1984. That's crazy. Uh, they're going to get Ron Tierney. I think he's going to be 83 out of the draft. Uh, let's see, 81. Okay, so left-wing sniper, 81 overall. That guy uh, is going to play with Crosby for the last year, maybe, of his career, if Crosby's even still a thing. But uh, very, very nice selection there for the Pittsburgh Penguins. They get a stud sniper who absolutely tore up the Western Hockey League. 55 goals, 136 points. How are you? Have yourself a draft, Pittsburgh. There you go. Now going up to the Ottawa Senators. They take a medium elite defenseman, 80 overall, two-way defenseman. Uh, we got Roberts here, who's again another 80 overall two-way defenseman. All right, we got another forward coming up maybe. There you go, straight. He's a 78 overall uh, left-wing sniper. Furland, uh, another medium elite. So the top five is all medium elites. And then, of course, it looks like it's going to drop off a little bit here. Uh, yeah, no more medium elites. And I'm actually surprised I'm not getting any trade offers since I pimped out the trade block. I put everything maxed out. We should be getting some offers, but... Unfortunately, I've got nothing happening right now. All right, so with the 30th overall selection in the NHL entry draft, what do we want to go after here? We don't really have like an immediate need. Uh, so we got Dylan Atkinson here, who is a center out of the O from Kingston. He had a decent-ish campaign, 18 years old, 39 points in 64 games. It's not fantastic. Uh, we got Magnus Hogland, the hog, Hogland. Uh, he's a right wing from the SHL, all right, 18 years old. Brandon Molson, who's a definite project, 17 years old, bunch of 17 year olds. Our center depth is pretty set, so let's go with Magnus Hogland here, a right wing Swede, never met a bad Swede in my life. Low elite, 69 overall, hey, nice. I'll take it, 69, nice overall. There you go, and Atkinson was medium top six. So yeah, we made the right choice there, thanks very much. Love my Swedes, absolutely. Absolutely. And then this guy was actually 67 low elite as well. So we made the right choice out of those three. That's for sure. Now I'm not actively trading anyone right now because a lot of the trading and a lot of the wheeling and dealing I want to do is going to be in free agency. Because if we trade Dougie Hamilton right now, say we trade him, right? We trade him for whatever. We can get another defenseman or we can get picks and prospects, all that good stuff. Say we trade him. Then we go to free agency. Oh man, Hayden Fleury decided to re-sign with the Carolina Hurricanes. Damn, then we're out of a player. So I don't want to make that mistake. I want to make sure we're going to have a player that we can uh, that we can go after. I want to make sure he's going to be available. I don't want to screw ourselves over. So we're going to quietly get this draft done. I don't think we need to do anything super crazy. Um, we could go with Linden, Tristan Linz, sorry, Linzen, not Linden, Linzen. Uh, or we continue with the wingers here, Morgan Saunders from Peterborough. So a couple of Peterborough guys. Um, we got high bottom six. He's going to be a bust, though. So I got to listen to the one or two scouts I have left. Wouldn't mind taking a defenseman here, but I think I might have to save that for my third or my fourth pick. So let's go with uh, Morgan Saunders, or we can go with Cohen Morita. I'm going to go with Morgan Saunders here. Six foot three, 203 pounds. Let's see what he's looking like. He is 59 overall, medium, a top nine. Who do we miss out on? So that guy might have been a better selection, but he is a grinder, though. So you got to think of that. Sometimes they don't progress quite as well as other players. Um, high bottom six. So Linzen, again, another grinder. So either way, I mean, we probably could have picked one of those guys, but can't win them all, right? Does anyone remember Avery Fitzmorris from our Seattle franchise? Or was that our... 
Ottawa won. I'm not sure. I've done so many. Um, so no defenseman on the board. We got Par Johnson here. Sorry, Par Johansson, who is 20 years old. So we could have a higher overall. Or we could go with a grinder. Or we can go with the goalie here, Gavin Berard, who's 6'5", 213. Uh, had a pretty decent year with the Red Deer Rebels in the uh, Western Hockey League. Alan Chipchura or Ross Fitzmorris. You know, Ross Fitzmorris seems like the safe pick. Let's go ahead and pick him. I'm not really going off the board here. Medium top six, 52 overall. So that's a little bit low. 59 for Chipchura. Ugh. Yikes. Maybe it's time to start taking some risks here. Maybe it's time to start. Ooh, 52 overall medium elite for Edmonton. And that Berard was a 60 overall medium starter. So Berard might have been a better selection. Well, again, can't win them all. Four straight goalies, actually. We got Berard, we got uh, Havlat, we got Barrett, and we got Gorin. Can we make it five straight tendies being chosen? Nope, Akers, he's going to break the trend. I'm actually surprised there's no trades, because usually once you beef up the trade block, it gets flooded, but maybe that's going to be for the offseason. Let's pick a defenseman here. Jamie Law, he's a big dude, 6'4", 200 pounds, out of the U.S. of A. There you go, baby. Going a little bit off the board, and... And he's low, top six, 57. Ugh, kind of a yikes. This whole draft has been kind of a yikes. I was so certain that we were going to win a Stanley Cup last episode. Like, I was so ready. Like, I was ready to record for like an hour and a half. I was so prepared. But unfortunately, the damn Vancouver Canucks had to screw us over. Ooh, or we got Isaac Drury, who's an absolute animal. 6'6", 223. He's a power forward. Um, yeah, he could be a big dude for us. Or we got Dawson Fai who's also a giant at six foot five. I'm gonna go with Isaac Drury, a, a giant centerman. You love to see it. Welcome to Saskatchewan. And he is medium bottom six, 55 overall. Yeah, again, it's just okay. And there's another player who's a little bit better. I mean, we could have a line of the big kid from Edmonton and a big kid from, where did he play again? Lethbridge, was it Lethbridge? I forgot. I should have looked. I'm pretty sure it was Lethbridge, but I know he was a Western Hockey League guy, right? We got Gunther, the big kid out of Edmonton, and Isaac Drury. That could be a scary tandem in five or six years. All right, the sixth pick here. Let's go with a goalie, James McGuire. There you go. Didn't play a single game this year, and he is high French starter. I'll take it. Round seven, 30th overall. A very boring draft. Got a whole bunch of Americans, or we can go with the Swede. Any 20-year-olds hanging out here that we could take a chance on? Ooh, we got one. We got one 20. We got one 20-year-old here, Dale Newbery. All right, we've had good luck with taking 20-year-olds in the past, and he is 59 overall sniper, medium at bottom six. It's not terrible. And that is going to be the end of the NHL entry draft. Honestly, no real crazy highlights, nothing to write home about, but we kind of have our window right now that in my eyes is like two or three more years of us being like absolutely disgustingly good. And then we're really going to have to run into some cap trouble here. But the good thing is we got guys like... Uh, we got guys like Chubby, who's making only $3.9 million. You need to talk to your agent. 50 goals, 25 assists. That is a 76-point campaign. 50 goals for $3.9 million. And the nice thing is, we have them locked up for the next four. So, yeah, that was the best contract I ever signed. Big time. So we got some big money to shell out here, $16 million to spend. And we have Kyle Connor, Bowen Byram, Kempney, Murphy, and then a whole bunch of guys for our AHL team. Is there anyone, uh, any attendees we got to sign? We could give Marc-Andre Fleury another shot or we could shop in free agency. But for the most part, I know it's going to be these two big guys. So what is he going to want? Seven Seven million bucks for six years isn't bad. 26 is going to bring him to 31. So if Kyle Connor wants seven million bucks, what's Bowen Byram going to want? That's going to give us, that's going to bring us like right to the ceiling pretty much. He wants six. There's 13 million right there. And we only have three million dollars to re sign Kempney, Murphy, all of these guys, even though they don't really count towards the cap. So I think we have to trade Dougie Hamilton because being right at the cap ceiling is a little bit scary for me. And coming up, next year when we have to sign a Gucci this team could seriously fall apart pretty damn quick because actually we got to re-sign Sujimoto and a Gucci next year oh my god 
Okay, so we got to re-sign those guys. We've got to re-sign who else? Who else big do we have to sign? Um, Sorelli's going to be cheap. Henestroza might not be back, even though I do like him. Um, no one else big. So we just got to re-sign those two giant guys, which is seriously going to take out a huge chunk. That's going to be $12 million per minimum. Um, so we got some things to worry about in the future, but right now I think our immediate thing should be get Kyle Connor signed, get Bowen Byram signed, and then work out the rest. So I think Bowen Byram is going to be pretty easy. I think we can maybe get him for a little bit cheaper. Let's try 5.7 million for the next four years, bring him to 26, and then Kyle Connor at his age of 26, he doesn't want an extension, so I'm going to have to beef it up a little bit, but I'm more interested in like a three-year deal at like seven and a half. That's something I think would be suitable for myself. Three years, seven and a half million bucks for 80 points. I can't really hate on that. So I'm basically wanting to get those two guys signed before everyone else. I want to see. He says no. Kyle Connor says no. Bowen Byram also says no. Okay. This is going to be a bit more difficult than I thought. So if he doesn't want 7.5, I'm sure he wants term. That's the thing. 26 years old. Of course he's going to want term. Not super pumped on a six-year deal, but him and Chubby, they're so good together. you got to pay to play. So 7.5 for six. Let's try that. He's a guy who, again, you can easily trade. So I'm not super worried. He has, he's always going to have a decent amount of trade value. But when Byron 6.2, is that going to get it done? I think we have to trade Dougie Hamilton no matter what because we're going to be so stretched at the cap ceiling. Uh, Kyle Connor said no. Bowen Byram, he says yes. So Bowen Byram, ouch. You can't leave me, bud. Like, I don't really think I can afford to pay him any more than 7.5. I mean, 89 overall. He's listed as a second liner, so I think he's going to go down. Maybe this could be something that we could wait until free agency for. Maybe he'll want, like, maybe maybe he'll come down a little bit. Maybe he'll go to, like, $7 million for five years or something like that. But let's try at a four-year deal at 7.5. 7 point... Let's go back to the three years at 7.7. 7.75. 7 That's a lot to pay. That's so much to pay. I mean, Kyle Connor and Chubby, they work out so good together, right? Kind of seemed like a match made in heaven. So 7.7 .7 for three years, 7.75 .7 for three years. Let's try that. I know he's going to want term, so maybe it's something we're going to have to revisit in free agency, which I'm not super opposed to, but I would like to get it done. Yeah, he's going to say no. Yikes. Maybe we'll have to revisit all of these in free agency. I'm going to save all of this for free agency. We're going to go all the way to free agency. I'm not worried about it. We've dealt with this a lot in the past. Now let's see what Kyle Connor wants, because sometimes it can be a little bit cheaper. Um, and he is the second best free agent out there. Damn. Mark Shifley has went to market. Damn. Okay, so he wants 7.2 for four years. So that's something we could deal with. That's something I was prepared to do. I was prepared to give you 7.5 for four years. I can do that, all right? Let's go. Let's meet in the middle here. That seems like it should get done. Hopefully, he doesn't sign with anyone else. Um, but here we go. Here's the big guy, Hayden Fleury. All right, so he is 85 overall, $5.3 million. Now, if we trade Dougie Hamilton, we're going to save that extra $2 million bucks. But even then, are we going to have enough? I'm thinking if we just, you know, buck up the extra million dollars, we can get a guy like Ghost. You know what I mean? Who's 30 years old. He's going to put up 60 points minimum, basically four straight years of 60 points. That might not be a bad idea either. He wants four years, which isn't terrible. We are like right at the cap ceiling, though, after signing, um, after signing that guy. So we're going to take a bit of a risk here. We're going to have to sign either one of them and then trade Dougie Hamilton or see if we can trade some cap right now because simply we just have too much money spent which sucks. I'm thinking we trade Dougie Hamilton for a first and a prospect or a prospect and a pick or what have you. And then we should just go after Hayden Fleury because we don't really need another 88 overall guy to play on our second line pairings. We're going to have Boquist and either Bowen Byram or Boquist and Justin Falk. Probably be Boquist and Falk and then we'll go Bowen Byram and Hayden Fleury. So, you know what? I think I'm okay with this. I think I'm okay with just getting rid of Braden Shen uh, and maybe some other cap 
if we can shed it. So I think I'm okay with just getting rid of Dougie Hamilton and then going and then going back and re-signing Hayden Fleury. So let me see if I can shed any other cap. Like Henestroza at three million bucks, that's a lot for a third liner. Even though I really like Vinny Henestroza, I think he's played great this year. He had 35 points. He had a decent postseason. We need to save as much money as possible. First off, I'll see if there's any other defenseman who we can just trade for straight up one for one. That would be ideal. All right, so I think I have something here with the Montreal Canadiens. Now, they have basically no defense at all, but they're a good team. They're a good team, but they have basically no one on the back end. They have Adam Larson, best guy ever. Thank you very much. Victor Mete, like Jeff Petrie, like they have, they have minimal defensemen here. So I think if we can get a first and another first, so two firsts, Tampa and Montreal's, obviously they're both good teams, so their firsts aren't going to be great, but still their first round picks. We've actually had pretty good luck with these uh, first round picks becoming potentially lottery picks. Not saying that's going to happen, but I like to take my chances. Now, if we can get two firsts and this Arkhipov guy, who is a low elite uh, 67 overall defenseman, I would absolutely love that. That would be amazing. If this will go through, I'd be pumped. The trade value looks a little bit in their side. I think Arkhipov's going to push it over the edge. I might have to get someone who's not quite as good, but they do want Dougie Hamilton. So will this go through? Trade rejected. So I think I'm going to have to get someone who's not quite as good. I would like to get a prospect. What about a center prospect here, Norm Clarkson, who is a former first round pick, 20 years old. So he's still got lots of potential. Uh, he had pretty had a pretty good year down there in the AHL. So if we could snag this guy, he has basically no trade value. That would be cool. Would this go through for Dougie Hamilton? Sweeten it just a touch. That's that shit I love to hear. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me go ahead here and just add in a fifth or something. If we can have three firsts going into next year with the Stanley Cup ring, thank you very much. All right, a fifth's not gonna get it done. How about a fourth? Will a fourth maker go through? How about that? Yes, trade accepted. There you go. We just got two firsts for Dougie Hamilton. This is not a drill. All right, you guys smell that? Take a quick whiff. <laughs> you smell what that is? That's cap space, baby. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, Hayden Fleury, he's a Saskatchewan-born kid. He's a top four guy. He kind of fits our need perfectly. Not going to put up a ton of points, but if I put him with a guy maybe like Justin Falk and we put Bowen Byram up on the first line, I think that might be able to strengthen his offensive capability. Or we can go after a guy like Sammy Niku, who's a two-way defenseman out of Winnipeg, maybe a little bit more offensively gifted. But I think, you know, with the storyline, with all of this, we got to go after Hayden Fleury. Edmonton is interested. So finally, they're going after a defenseman. Uh, let's give him 7.5 million. Sorry, not 7.5, 5.75. Um, there, no, there is another team interested, so I have to buck up my offer a little bit. Let's see if that will go through. And we also have to go back and search some uh, defensemen for us because we still need two bottom pairing defensemen. So we are far from done. However, there are lots of players in free agency I am interested in. So let me go ahead and cop a few of these guys. A couple of low elites. Don't mind if I do. So we are going to sign Mackenzie Blackwood here, who's a 79 overall backup goalie, 1.2 million bucks. We're going to say goodbye to Marc-Andre Fleury. We're going to go with a younger kid, 26 years old. That should get her done. Now, as for defensemen, um, we need to make a choice on what are we going to do. I'd like to cheap out a little bit. I don't want to spend, you know, 3 million bucks on a guy like Connor Murphy. I want to keep her cheap because they're going to be our bottom pairing guys. I want to keep them cheap. I want to keep them 1.5, maybe 2. 2.5 max. Now Samuel Moran is a guy I like. Six foot six, 203 pounds, defensively sound. That's a guy who kills penalties. That's a guy who I'm gonna like on my hockey team. Uh, 2.2 million dollars. That's fine. There you go. Actually, Carolina is interested. So how about 2.3? Now we have that extra cap space, so I'm cool with spending a little bit extra. Uh, now we need one more defenseman. We can go with Troy Stetcher, who wants three million bucks for the next two years. More of an offensive guy. I wouldn't mind getting Troy Stetcher. Um, I think that's an upgrade from Michael Kempney, to be honest with you, and he's 500 grand cheaper. However, I'm more interested at like a 2.2 million for one year. Let's go with that. 2.2 for one for Troy Stetcher. Then we can go Stetcher and 
Samuel Moran as opposed to Kempney and where else is he Connor Murphy so we downgraded overall a little bit but we get younger some younger some faster players let's see first off if Kyle Connor is going to sign please god Kyle Connor sign the big kid and a first for Ekholm and Pissick what are you what are you smoking David Poyle what are you smoking John Moore for a second and a six no thank you come on Kyle Connor sign the contract a bunch of these low elite guys are signing on the dotted line you'll love to see it Ooh, Evgeny Malkin and Justin Schultz for Mahalik. I mean, maybe five years ago this would have been a good trade, but Justin Schultz obviously is not super great. Making 4.4 for the next six years. I'm going to politely say no to that one. Come on, Kyle Connor. Sign on the dotted line, buddy. Do it. Do the right thing. Mackenzie Blackwood. Oh, okay, wait. He said no because our roster's full. This could be a problem. Uh, oh, no, our roster's full. Okay, Troy Stetcher said yes. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. They want to give me back Dougie Hamilton. Did you see that? I got out of that pretty quickly because I wanted to make sure we have a, have a roster spot. Okay, so I got to figure some stuff out. 34 out of 50. What do you mean we have a full roster? Hello? So all these guys are like 25 years old. They're taking up roster spots. I tender qualified all of them. So that's why they're uh, saying we have a full roster. So I'm going to send all of them to the Islanders for two fourths. Trade rejected. Okay. Uh, how about just one fourth? I don't really care. All these guys are like 25, 26 years old. They're not going to be anything for our team. That clears up spots for our younger players uh, to eventually come in. So we've got some work to do here. I'm really hoping Kyle Connor signs because um, I think he's going to sign the next couple days we have 15 million we have an extra like three million dollars to work with uh i gotta find another defenseman and yeah another backup goalie so unfortunately um mr samuel moran decided to go elsewhere which i guess yeah, I guess it's fine, although it hurts, but I guess it's fine. All right, so we're going to have a contract here to Nathan Beaulieu, 1.95 million bucks for one year. There's really not a lot of better options. Like, I could have went with, like, Dylan DeMello, but he's just not quite as good as Nathan Beaulieu. So that's going to be our one defenseman, and i got to go ahead and i got to sign a backup goalie. This is just the episode where we do, like, fine tweaking. you just got to get all the little things done before we, before we hop into the big episode, which is going to be a whole bunch of simulation in the next one. But... I'm hoping we have enough cap because uh, we are really stretching it thin here. I really hope I really hope Kyle Connor signs. Like that's not even a guarantee either. Like we could be we could be really screwed here. So hopefully this is the day where he signs. There you go. Kyle Connor says yes. Thank you. So does Hayden Flurry. Everything is good. All's well that ends well. Thank you very much. All right, I can breathe a little bit here. Nathan Beaulieu is good to go. Mackenzie Blackwood is good to go. And we are all ready to head into the next year. Thank God. This is the last year where we're going to have a run with this core. After this year, it's going to be not torn apart, but things are going to look a lot different. We've got to give a Gucci a contract. We've got to give Sujimoto a contract. We've got to sign a bunch of players. So this is our year. This is our year where we have the core that we want. I mean, there's some pieces I'd like to change, and obviously I'd like to improve, but in a cap world, you can't really do much, unfortunately. But Braden Shen, Sujimoto, and Justin Falk. I kind of want to take the A off of Falk and put it on... On, um, put it on Adam Boquist. I think he deserves it, but Justin Falk's a vet on the back end. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it as is. There's no need for me to change it. Now let's have a look at the lines here. It's the first time I'm seeing them just as you guys are as well. So, all right. So Cole Perfetti is now an 85 overall. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and see what we can do here. Hayden Fleury, Justin Falk. That all looks good. Bowen Byron is now an 89. That's awesome. Anyone scratched here? Uh, Jarvis and Dylan Gunther, the big kid from Edmonton. He's a minor checker, so he should probably play in the AHL. Although I'd like to see him up with the big club. But let me have a look here. Let me see what I can do with these lines. And I'll see you guys in a second. All right, here we go. Hiroyuki, Aguchi, Sujimoto, the Japanese sense sensation line Kyle Connor Cole Profetti who's going to now be the legitimate bonafide second line center you love to see it on the wing we got 50 goal man 
and Valery Chubby Chubasov on the third line. We got Braden Shen. That's right, demoted to the third line. However, it's not bad because he's going to play alongside of Anthony Sorelli and Vinny Hinestroza. We got Killer, we got Sissons, and we got Tyler Benson. Now, looking towards the future, Braden Shen obviously is overpaid for a third liner. I know that. I 100% know that. Although, I'd like him to be here for a Stanley Cup. So once we win our Cup at the end of this year, because this is the year to do it. I'm going all out this year. Whatever it takes, we're winning the Stanley Cup. Uh, we could end up trading Braden Shen. He's 32 years old. That can be something that can happen. Obviously, um, the contract is not ideal. And with him not getting any younger, it might be something we have to do at the end of next year to keep a guy like Gucci on the roster. As for defense, we got Bowen Byram. Adam, don't call him Bork Boquist, what a beast, the Norris Trophy winner. Uh, we got Justin Falk and Hayden Fleury, the Saskatchewan boy. Welcome to the squad. We got Nathan Beaulieu and Troy Stetcher. So two brand new faces on the back end, actually three with Hayden Fleury. Uh, as for goaltenders, we got Big Germ, who's a 92, 6 foot 9, 243 pounds. And we got Mackenzie Blackwood, who's also 6 foot 4, 220 pounds. So our goalies, a bunch of big dudes. Here's how the AHL team is looking we got the big kid Gunther he's moving on to the AHL after ripping up the Western Hockey League for five straight seasons what a monster uh, 50 goals last year 110 points what a beast and that's the AHL team that's the NHL team let's get a couple games of simulation done in this episode and then we're gonna call this one not a super exciting episode but these are ones you got to just do some minor tweaking but we got merch and that's always exciting now I'd like to see where Mark Shifley went in free agency because uh, if he went to one of our rivals that's something we got to take a look at but let's just quickly search for him mark Shifley. I don't know how to spell Shifley, so I'm just going to go with Mark. Let's see where he pops up. He's probably one of the best Marks in the NHL. And he went to the Islanders. There you go. So him and Barzell, that's, uh, that's interesting. Let's have a look at their roster, actually. Let's see where he fits in. Look at the kid from Anaheim. He's now a 90 overall, second year in the league. How are you? There's a look at Agent C, 93 overall. Pretty damn good. Yeah, so they needed a first line center. That's right, actually. Barzell's gone. Where did Barzell go again? Where did he go? Oh, man, I forget. There's been so many giant trades. Where the hell did Barzell go? And Pittsburgh is not playing Tierney with Crosby, but they're playing him with Geno. So it's not bad for your rookie season to be playing alongside of Geno Malkin. So there it is. Michael Dal Cole is now an 83 overall. So he did drop. We made the right choice. Thank you, Kyle Connor. Now, since they didn't sign Mark Shifley, their center, their centers are weak. But this is in like reverse. I would put Wheeler, Dal Cole, Roslovic, Appleton. I don't know why they're putting it in reverse. What are you doing over there in Winnipeg? Seriously. Barzell went to Washington. That's right. I remember. So they got one, two punch. I remember that. Okay. There you go. So this is kind of interesting. Game number one in front of our home fans. And guess who's in the building? Not Sidney Crosby. Not Evgeny Malkin. Ross Tierney, the first overall pick. The next one. He's starting his first career NHL game against the Saskatchewan Stags in Saskatchewan. All right. Let's go, boys. Let's welcome this kid to the NHL. Chubbs put this guy through the boards. Just take his head off. Here we go. Period number one. And it's 1-1. One, one. Hiroyuki, there you go. And then, uh, oh wait, we started Mackenzie Blackwood? Why? I, I don't have Blackwood as a starter. What are you guys doing? I have Big Germ as the starter. Why do they do that? It's so annoying. Okay, well, Gino scores on Mackenzie Blackwood. Period number two. Three to one. Chubbs and Sujimoto. There you go. We got Chubbs and a couple of Japanese boys scoring. Uh, Sidney Crosby scores on our backup goalie in front of our home fans, in front of our home opener where Big Germ's on the bench for some reason. Braden Shen. He's been involved in trade rumors, but he's still sticking it with the C on his sweater. Aguchi. There you go. Make Making it five to two. Welcome to the NHL, Ross Tierney. Welcome to the show. This is a real team. You just faced a real squad. There you go. Five to two. Easy, easy victory. Mackenzie Blackwood made 29 stops. There you go. First win as a stag. Even though you should have been on the bench, but we're not going to talk about that. Ross Tierney had one shot, uh, one face-off taken, one face-off win. So, so a very, very successful NHL debut for the first overall pick.
We'll slow sim the game against Arizona, and then we're going to call this one an episode. Again, not the most exciting episode ever, but we had to get the minor tweaks done. These are things you got to do when you run an NHL franchise. Nine to five. The boys are buzzing. They want a Stanley Cup. Nothing else will suffice. Gucci's got six points in two games. It's just a casual nine goal performance with the second game of the year. Gucci had four. Uh, let's see what else happened here. Um, nothing else. I guess just a four-point performance. Okay. Up against Agency and Alex Ovechkin in the desert. Game number three on the year. Another home game worth 2-0. and Can we make it 3-0? and Starting it off. And Vincent Trocek. Why is Blackwood getting all the starts? What is going on? Sir, I have Big Germ as a starter. What the hell? Okay. Period number two. All right, we tie it up. Sujimoto on Brooks. Why is Big Germ not getting any ice? Like, is he sick? What's going on? Agency scores from right in front of the net. But Braden Shen comes right back with his second of the year. We tie up the game. 37 shots for the Arizona Coyotes. But Iguchi continues his hot play, makes it 3-2. to two. Puts us ahead by 1, even though we're being outshot by over 10. But Mackenzie Blackwood. Oh, my God, I jinxed it. I jinxed it. Vincent Trocek gets his second of the night going into overtime are we going into a shootout just for fun nope oliver ekman larson scores why why are we starting mackenzie blackwood why this makes no sense he's not the starting goalie on your saskatchewan stags why like big germ is the starter i just don't get it i don't get why mackenzie blackwood had two had two starts there in the first three games. That just is so silly. You know what, actually, since this one was a little bit boring, let's just go ahead and get all of October done. It's actually only a few games. It goes up till the Buffalo game on the first. So it's not like we're getting anything crazy. It's not like we're doing three or four months here. Just starting it off. Unless we go on a big old losing streak here, maybe I might have to stop it. But 7 nothing. There's Big Germ with a start. He goes, don't you ever put me on the bench again. I'm way too big to sit on the bench. 9-3. to three. What is going on with our team? We are scoring lots of goals. And then we get shelled 7-1. to one. Okay, Stags, you guys good? This is a little bit of a weird start, not going to lie. Chubby had four points in a 9-3 game. Kyle Connor had six points in a 9-3 thumping of the Sharks. And Braden Shen had five. Also, look at that. Game report, 7-1. to one. Dylan, big kid from Edmonton, had one heck of a game recording four points. Welcome to the AHL. Now, Braden Shen's playing on the third line, but he doesn't really seem to mind because he's averaging a goal per game. He's got 12 points in six games. Maybe the third line is where he belongs. What a weird start. We scored nine goals twice, seven once, and then we've allowed seven goals one time, but we bounce back with a big old six to two win. I'll slow sim the game against Calgary, and then I promise this video is going to end. I promise. Uh, up against Ottawa, seven to two. Seriously, every night we're putting up over five. That's insane. We've scored over five goals in every game except for two. That's ridiculous. Six out of our eight games, we've scored over five goals. That's crazy. All right, up against the Flames. They bounced us out of the postseason a couple years ago. I'm not over it. I'm still bitter. Let's go. Period number one, zero, zero. Period number two. All right, two nothing. Falk and Hiro Yuki. I need a Chubbs goal. I need a Chubbs goal to end it off. Elias Lindholm. There you go. Cole Profetti. Chubby, there you go. Ask and you shall receive. You love to see it. What a guy. Guy, my favorite guy in the entire universe. 34 shots to 31. Boquist, there you go, making it 5 to 1. Another game with 5 goals. Can we make it over 5 goals just for fun? Just for the memes? Come on, do it. One more time. One more time. There you go, Justin Falk with his second of the night. Another dominating performance. Seriously, I am very impressed. Chubby, 4 points. How are you? What a guy. You know what they say, you can't end on a heater. You know, it's kind of what they say. You know what they say, you can't end on a heater. So I guess we got to keep going. I see the big kid from Edmonton involved in a trade and I say no. Absolutely not. You can't end on a heater. Come on, you got to keep it going here. Okay, well, there's a loss. It's probably a sign I should stop the episode. So thank you for watching. Uh, Sujimoto has 18 points in 10 games. Not bad at all. We'll quickly have a look at everyone. I know we've been scoring at a stupid pace right now. So we have so many players with over a point per game. I mean, Vinny Henestroza is almost a point per game throughout the first 10. That's ridiculous. Boquist, Haruyuki, and Falk all have 10. Kyle 
Connors got 15. Um, where's Chubbs? Oh, sorry. Chubbs is number two on our team. Eight goals in 10 games, picking up where he left off. Seriously, this is some insane scoring. Uh, Sorelli's got eight. Perfetti's got seven. Tyler Benson's got six. How are you? Uh, Troy Stetcher has one assist. Nathan Beaulieu, Tyler Benson, and Bowen Byram are the only players on our team without a goal. As for goalies, Mackenzie Blackwood is 1-1-1, one, one, and, one, and Big Germ is 6-1 and one with one shutout. So quickly have a look around the entire NHL just because I know uh, things are crazy right now. Lots of goals being scored. Uh, Ross Tierney there. Sorry, not Ross. Ron Tierney. He's got 11 points in 10 games, so this kid's going to be a stud. And then we got Raphael Lavoie, and he's got 12 points in 9 games. So there you go. As for skaters around the entire NHL, Holy shit. Nika Solani has 15 goals in nine games. Um, okay. Uh, Tavares, Dabrinkat, Sujimoto is right behind him there. So, again, lots of points are being scored. But watch out for Nika Solani. That guy is on a mission. Oh, my God. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode. I think we're just going to go ahead and get a bunch of simulation done because this is our year. If you guys think it's our year, let me know in the comments. If you, if you bought some merch, let me know, and I will see you guys in the next one.